Are you stuck in a design rut for your PowerPoints? Well, today I'm rounding up the top tips for leveling up your PowerPoint design so that you can stand out with your next presentation. Before I start, just a very quick disclaimer that today I'll be using the full Microsoft 365 version of PowerPoint. So if you do want to use all of these features, make sure you're subscribed and using that version too. All right, let's start off with a brand new PowerPoint, which automatically drops us in at the title slide, which is in a format we've probably all used a thousand times before. Let's take a look at taking this design up a notch in two ways, the easy way and the intermediate way. We'll start off easy because, well, it's easier. If you find coming up with new creative ideas hard or just don't have the time to commit to designing, then be sure to click this button in the top right of the ribbon called Designer. Designer uses AI to generate slide ideas for you at the click of a button, but these are pretty generic at the moment. My PowerPoint is gonna be about the rainforest, so let's input that title. And now the design ideas generated are a lot more specific for my topic or theme. If I then go to add a new slide, you'll see that it will apply a similar theme throughout my presentation. But if I'm not a fan of that, again, just input your slide information, then click Designer for different layout and design variations. Designer will take into account any text, images, or even inking that you decide to apply to your slide. So you still have some creative freedom with your slide designs. That's the super quick and easy method out of the way. But maybe you don't always want to rely on Designer. So let's take a look at some other design tips and tricks. I'm gonna go back to a blank slide and show you how we can add a little bit more movement to our designs with merge shapes. So first, I'm gonna insert a video from the stock video library to suit my rainforest theme. The stock libraries are filled to the brim with videos, images, and icons that you can use and are all included in your Microsoft 365 subscription. Once our video is inserted, let's just make sure it will play automatically and loop in the video settings. Now I want to add my title, so let's add a rectangle above the video and then a text box with our title. Now all I want to do is select the shape first and then the text by holding control while selecting and then go to shape format, merge shapes and subtract. This gives us a title with movement behind it thanks to the video we pasted earlier. There are loads of other creative ways that you can use other settings in merge shapes, such as creating new shapes and cutouts, so be sure to have a little bit of an experiment. Title slide design done. Now we need to move on to the next slide. But as we're looking at movement between slides, let's take a look at one of the most versatile transitions, Morph. Morph can be used in so many ways the key is to ensure that whatever movement or morph of an object you want to create, that the object is on both the before and the after slide. Let me show you what I actually mean. Say we want to create a zooming out title morph here. First, I want to duplicate the title I just created by right clicking and then duplicate slide or by using the hotkey Ctrl and D. Now, select the second slide and zoom out. We now want to stretch our cutout title shape until we can just see the video underneath. This may take some readjusting to get perfect, but once you're done, just head to transitions, select the second slide and then morph and then boom, sexy zoom. So that's how you can use morph as a typical transition. But what about using it to create movement on a slide between points? Let's move to a slide that I made earlier. So here you can see I've just inserted some pictures and bullet points but it's currently not very aesthetically pleasing in my opinion. Before I show you another morph, let me show you another quick tip, which is crop to shape on these pictures. Crop to shape gives me some different style ideas instead of the standard rectangle that most images will be in. Just go to crop, click the arrow below and crop to shape. Then choose the shape that you'd like. To resize your shape or your object, just hit crop and use the tabs or grab the image to make it perfect. So here are our pictures and text. Now let's use Morph to add some animation. I'm gonna quickly resize and rearrange these images before duplicating the slide. Okay, now my slide's duplicated, I can again resize my images on each slide and move them around before adding the Morph transition. This will add a smooth movement between where the images or the text boxes on slide one and where it ends up on slide two. 
Whether you move, resize, or rotate an image, just make sure you have a start on the slide before and a finish on the slide after for a smooth morph effect to happen. But what about other interesting ways to move between slides? Well, why don't we make this deck super interactive by being able to move to different sections using a contents page and slide zoom. So here is the contents page I created earlier. And you'll see in my deck, I have now added some heading slides. To create a slide zoom, I literally grab the slide I want to zoom to and drag it over to my current content slide by clicking and holding while I drag. I can do this with all my headings and resize or reshape or add effects to them if I want to by going to zoom settings. I can also choose whether I want to keep the zoom transition here or even head back to the contents page after each section is finished. So let's take a look at this in action. If I open up my deck and I click on one of the headings, there I am right where I need to be. This is great if you want to create something like a digital flipbook or handout right in PowerPoint. Okay, last tip for today. So many of us use bullet points in our presentations as it's a great way to condense information. But when they all start to look the same, it can get a little bit tiresome on the eyes. So let's look at how we can format things differently thanks to smart art. Let's start from another slide I've made earlier with bullet points already on. Now, if I right click on the bullet points, I can select change to smart art and then select from one of the new layouts. There are so many to choose from with even more options if I select show more at the bottom. Whichever layout I choose, I can then decide to edit or rearrange it however I choose with the smart art design tab at the top. Plus even better is, if I'm not happy with it, I can just change the design or convert it back to text with the convert button. And our beautifully designed PowerPoint is done. I hope this has helped spark some creativity. And if you'd like to see some more of these tutorials, give this video a like and let us know what you want to learn about next in the comments below. That's all from me though today. Happy presenting and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.